working all day and you came out anyway, people say that parents don't want to get involved. And so this, this uh, teaching is just proof that, that if you invite parents out for meaningful interactions in schools, that they will come. And, and we're so uh, happy that you're here, but not just parents. We have community people here, so this is a, a wonderful educational uh, opportunity for all of us to join in. So you saw in the video what Facing History uh, is about, and it is about uh, using historical case studies as well as using contemporary case studies to help students uh, really grapple with questions about uh, choices and building good communities. Uh, questions about looking at times in history and also times today where, where students really have to grapple with, am I going to be a bystander when something is going on wrong or, or there's an injustice? Will I be a bystander and just sort of watch it? Or will I be what we call an upstander and do what I can you know, to correct an injustice? Or, or to stand up for somebody else in, in, in a difficult situation. So all of those big ideas that you heard in that video, it really comes down to us helping our students to be better citizens, to be better classmates, to be better neighbors, to treat their friends better, to treat their parents and teachers better. But we do it also in a way that's academically rigorous. In other words, when you walk in the face of history classroom, students are learning uh, facts and dates, and they're learning history. Uh, they're reading, and they're doing all of their critical thinking, and they're, they're writing, and they're doing all those wonderful things that they need to do to prepare themselves for college and life beyond high school, but they're doing it in a very thoughtful way that says, how do we use education as a tool to make our communities better? So that's what we're uh, trying to do with Facing History. And these teachings are a way to bring you into that uh, experience. So let me, let me ask you a quick question, and we're not gonna ask you to speak on this, but just to raise your hand. How many of y'all can remember in school at least one time or, uh, in, your, in growing up being, being teased or called a name and people might have even just said that they were just joking or they were just playing. But how, did, how many of y'all remember being called a hurtful name at some point when you were growing up? Anybody, has anybody escaped that experience? Almost no one escapes that experience, right? Of being teased or called a, a hurtful name. But how many of you all would say that you have experienced uh, being bullied before. Who would say I've been on, a, on, a, on the end of bullying? Now look, look around the room, raise your hand high. If you say, I've been bullied before. Now, there were fewer hands who said they've been bullied. There were more hands that said they have been teased or called a name. And so one of the things we're gonna grapple with tonight is what's the difference? Is name calling and teasing, is that a form of bullying? When does that become a form of bullying? And where is that line? Where, is we, where have we crossed that line from just teasing and playing to actually being hurtful? And one of the things the students is gonna help us understand tonight is where is that line? And, 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 and how do we navigate uh, that line, especially in schools? So, uh, we're going to start the, um, the evening with a, a, a looking at one of our own schools right here in Memphis, uh, Fairview Middle School, that really took on this notion of name calling and teasing. How many of you have uh, ever heard of the word checking? You know the word checking? Uh, some of y'all know the word good. So I got to educate you real quick so you'll know. So that name calling today and putting people down and, 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 and at the expense trying to get laughter, you know, trying to be funny. The, one of the things the kids call that today is checking. So Fairview recognized that that might not be a good thing, a good safe thing to happen in schools all the time. And they took it on. But I'll let the video speak for itself. But before I do that, I wanted my colleague Sarah Stewart to come up. Sarah really worked very closely with Fairview on this project. 
and I call her the bully queen because she is she is she doesn't bully but she has a personal real strong feeling against this notion of bullying and she is leading our work at facing history around anti-bullying so I want her to sort of frame the video for us. approached by the Fairview Middle School teachers, they said that students were concerned about the name calling and bullying, but they wanted to root it in a historical case study. So they studied what we call Choices in Little Rock, which was the desegregation of Little Rock High School, as a historical example of bullying, which I thought was great. And then they combined that to their, their school campaign, Stand Up, Stand Out, which was their anti-bullying campaign. One of the teachers that was part of that project is here today. Her name is Kristen Cornelius, and I'd love for you to stand and just give a little recognition. She worked really hard with her students. They read Warriors Don't Cry. It's a great memoir by Melba Patillo Beals, one of the Little Rock Nine. And so without further ado, I'd love for you to watch this short three-minute video of the kids at Fairview and their Stand Up, Stand Out project. <laughs> 